Yes, good morning, our learners. Uh, welcome to our English lesson today. And uh, today we are going to learn about modal verbs. Can you repeat the word modal verbs? Modal verbs. Maybe some of us are wondering what a modal verb is. Now, it is important for us to know that a modal verb is also called the helping verb. I repeat that. A modal verb is also called the helping verb. It is used together with the main verb to show one, ability, two, possibility, three, obligation, four, permission. One, ability, two, possibility, three, obligation, four, permission. We move on to our slide number two. Examples of modal verbs. Examples of helping verbs. One, can. Two, could. Three, will. Four, would. Five, shall. Six, should. Seven, may. Eight, might. Nine, must. Ten, or two. So how many examples have I given? Ten examples. Can we read together? Can, could, will, would, shall, should, may, might, must, ought to, etc., etc. Let us proceed. Uh, let us try to see how each and every mode of verb is used. Starting with can. Can is used to show ability. Can is used to show ability. Example in sentence form. I can draw a lion. Can the class repeat that? I can draw a lion. Wonderful. Let us go to number two. Can is also used to give permission. Can is also used to give permission. Example in sentence form, you can always borrow my car. Yeah, whenever you want to drive, you can always borrow my car. Very good. Could is the past tense of the word can in reported speech. That one is vital for us to understand. How do we use could in sentence form? It is used to show possibility. The possibility of something happening. The possibility of an event happening. Let me give examples in sentence form. We could have come were it not for the rain. Again, we could have come were it not for the rain, meaning we did not come because there was a heavy downpour, because it rained cats and dogs. You understand? Let us move on to number two. Were it not for our goalkeeper, we could have won the match. Yeah, we did not win the match because our goalkeeper was not serious. Our goalkeeper blundered. That is why we lost the match. The match. So were it not for our goalkeeper, we could have won the match. Understood? Let us proceed. Uh, we want to look at the mode of verb will. How is the mode of verb will used? It is used to talk about events that will happen in future. It is used to talk about events that will happen in future. Example in sentence form. I will visit you tomorrow. Can we repeat that? I will visit you tomorrow. Number two, they will receive their rewards next week. Good. You understand? Very good. Uh, will is also used uh, as a request. It's also used as a request to ask somebody to do something. Will is also used as a request to ask somebody to do something. Will you sweep the class, please? Dirty. 
And you know, we cannot learn in a dirty environment. Will you sweep the class, please? So we are using the model auxiliary verb will uh, as a request. Number two, will you get out of my way? Yeah, you understand that? Let us proceed. Will is also used to state general truths, to state what is true. We have what we call general truths. Example in sentence form, with the clouds on the sky, it will rain. With the clouds on the sky, it will rain. We come to number two, this stone will sink in water. It is axiomatic. No doubt that stones sink in water. They cannot defy the scientific principles. Are we there? So whatever you're talking about general truths, we use the model auxiliary verb will. With the clouds on the sky, it will rain. This stone will sink in water. It will not float, isn't it? Yeah. Let us now move to wood. Now, wood is used as a past tense of will in the reported speech. Did you get that? I come again. Wood is used as a past tense of will in the reported speech. It describes a possible action or event. It describes a possible action or event. Yeah? Uh, let me give an example. Let me give an example in this. If I had money, I would buy a car. Let the class repeat that. If I had money, I would buy a car. Did you get that? Wood is also used in making requests. Wood is also used in making requests. Would you mind helping me with your book? Would you mind helping me with your book? Can the class repeat that? Would you mind helping me with your book? Would you mind? If I ask you, maybe you are hungry, you're dying of hunger, and at least you need something to fill your tummy. So I ask you, would you mind taking your lunch? What should be your response? I wouldn't mind. If you say you would mind, then I'll tell you, okay, you can continue feeling hungry. You understand that? Yes, let us proceed. Wood is also used to express a wish. I wish he would come to see me, to express a wish. Wood is also used to express a wish. I wish he would come to see me. You understand that? Very good. Let us now move on to may. Can the class say may? So the model auxiliary verb may is used, is used to show doubt, being unsure of the outcome of an event. Whenever we are not sure, whenever we are in doubt of the outcome of a certain event, then we use may. An example in sentence form, he may win the elections. He may win the election. So we are not quite sure whether he's going to win. Let us look at the use of may again, number two. May is also used to ask or give permission. May I have more soup? May I have my pen? Excuse me, may I pass? You understand? May I, I think that is more formal. So to ask for permission or rather give permission, right? Let me give an example in sentence form where may is used to give permission. Maybe teacher Jacob is in class teaching. The bear has gone. It's time for lunch. So what will Mr. Jacob say? You may go for lunch now. You may take your lunch now. So to ask or give permission, we use the modal auxiliary verb may. You understand that? Now, another example, may I leave now? So that is a request to ask for permission using the modal auxiliary verb may. Now let us move on to the next one. May is also used to express a wish. May is also used to express a wish. May you have a Merry Christmas. May you have a wonderful afternoon. May you live to blow a thousand candles. You understand that? So may is also used to express a what? 
a wish. Very good. We now come to might. Might is used as the past tense of may in reported speech. We have may, might, may, might. Are we together? Might is also used to show possibility and doubt. Possibility and what? Doubt. Let me give an example. We might get a chance to see the Pope when he comes to Kenya. We might get a chance. So it is not guaranteed. It is either we might get a chance to see him, we might see him or not see him. So can the class repeat this? We might get a chance to see the Pope when he comes to Kenya. Might is also used to make a polite request. Might is also used to make a polite request. Might we be the victims? Are we there? Yes, we also go to the next one. Might is also used to ask for information. Might is also used to ask for information. I wonder whether you might have any information about this. I wonder whether you might have any information about this. Let us move on to the next one. The other model auxiliary verb that you want to use is shall. Shall is used when uh, used with I and we. The perso first person singular pronoun I and we to predict the future. Example in sentence form, I shall call you when I arrive. I shall call you. You understand? We shall travel to Nairobi next week. Now there's something very important that I want you to know. We cannot use shall with you or they. We use shall with I in singular and we in plural. Not with he, she, it, they. Yeah, you understand that? Yes. So I shall call you when I arrive. We shall travel to Nairobi next week. I move on to the next one. Shall is used in questions with I and we to make suggestions or offers. Shall is used in questions with I and we to make suggestions or offers. Who shall we buy mother for the birthday? Mama is having a birthday. So you ask your uh, siblings, you ask your father, who shall we buy mother for the birthday? Can we repeat that together? Who shall we buy mother for the birthday? Very good. Uh, we move on now to the next model auxiliary verb. The other model auxiliary verb in, uh, that we have here is should. Now, should is used as a past tense of shall when reporting what somebody said. Shall becomes should. You understand that? It is used to refer to a possible event or situation. Should you come late? Kindly call me. Should you come late? Kindly call me. You understand that? Now, uh, let us move on to the next one. Should is used to show an obligation. What is necessary to be done? You should be seated before the exam begins. You should be seated before the exam starts. So should, in this case, is being used to show an obligation what is expected of you, right? Yeah, let us keep the pot boiling. Should is used when giving advice. Whenever you are giving a piece of advice to someone, you can use the model auxiliary verb should. You should obey your parents. You should finish the teacher's work. You should not misbehave. So in this particular case, we are using the model auxiliary verb should to give advice. You understand? Now, must is also used to show that something is, now we are coming to must. This is our next model auxiliary verb. And we are saying that must is used to show that something is important or necessary. Everyone must attend school. Everyone must attend school. Number two, must is also used an, as an obligation because it is a good idea. I must finish school 
before getting a job. I must finish school before getting a job. And by the way, it is also important for us to know, must goes with have to. And then should goes with ought to. Ought to means should, have to means must. What is compulsory? What is not optional? What is mandatory? You understand that? Very good. I want to believe you are following closely. Now, mass is also used to, uh, to show that something, to show, yeah? To show that something is logical or likely. To show that something is lacking some sense. Are we together? Now, let's look at the example we have here. Let me give you an example very fast of that. Now, look at that. You must be tired after carrying a, such a big luggage. So when you carry a big luggage, when you carry a big luggage, of course you'll be tired. You can imagine uh, carrying, a, uh, carrying a whole table. So when I meet you, you tell me you must be tired after carrying a such, after carrying such a big luggage after car carrying such a big luggage. You understand that? Now we come to O2. Now O2 is used to indicate an obligation, recommendation, or advice. O2 is used to indicate an obligation, recommendation, or advice. You ought to exercise. Yeah? You ought to visit the sick in hospital. They ought to be paid their dues. You understand that? Now, we look at that together. So we are coming to that. You ought to exercise. You ought to visit the sick in hospital. They ought to be paid their dues. You understand that? What is an obligation? What is a recommendation? Or what is an advice? And remember, I've said this. Ought to goes with should. Then have to goes with must. What is mandatory? What is uh, not optional? What is compulsory? You understand that? Yeah. So hopefully you have been following the lesson closely. We come to the end of the lesson and I'm appealing to you to be a bit active in the WhatsApp group. At least make sure you ask a question where you don't understand. Our team will be ready to respond and clear the air or rather do clarification on areas that we experience difficulties. Yeah, uh, this is what I also want you to do again. I want you to copy these notes in your exercise books. You're going to write the date. I want to believe that you have not forgotten where, where today is. Yeah, after that, you're going to write modo verbs. Then you're going to copy the notes very well. The way the teacher has arranged his notes, also arrange yours like that. And then after you're done, I want you to construct, to construct two sentences in each case using the model auxiliaries given. Did you get that? Construct two sentences in each case using the model auxiliaries given. That would be our assignment. And remember, like I've always said, uh, times without number, the teacher's work must be done. The teacher's work must be done. Uh, in the bottom line, uh, I also want to remind you that next week we are going to have an exam, an exam that is on Monday and Tuesday. So I'm calling upon us to continue revising hard so that you get prepared, right? Are we together up to that very point? Yeah, so let us take everything seriously, revise hard and get prepared even as the exam approaches because that is what we are going to use as a tool to ascertain whether you have been following or not. Are you getting that class? Very good. Now, last but certainly not the least, I want to urge you to continue keeping safe. Make sure that you have a face mask with you. Yeah. Make sure that you have a face mask. Make sure that you keep social distance. 
make sure that you sanitize with alcohol-based sanitizer or wash your hard dentry with detergents to keep off this malady by the name coronavirus. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much and may God bless you. See you in our next lesson. Bye. Until next time.